We're cooking around the London Underground again, and this week we're going on the hunt for Paddington Bear. Our adventure begins at Paddington Station, where the London Underground was born when the Metropolitan Railway opened the first underground line to Farringdon in 1863. Originally named Bishop's Road, the station opened in 1854, acting as a link between London and the West Country and the South of Wales. The station was designed by Eisenberg Kingdom Brunel, famous for engineering the Thames Tunnel and the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol. One of his original iron bridges was discovered hidden inside the brick Bishop's Bridge on the rail approach to the station during work for Crossrail. Though money is still being raised to restore the bridge, you can see several other engineering wonders around Paddington, including the Fan Bridge and the Rolling Bridge over the canal in Merton Square, which you can see being opened and closed every Friday and Saturday at 2pm. If you're in the area on a weekday, you can even take a free water taxi boat ride along the canal between 12 and 2. Paddington Basin is a great place to head for breakfast or lunch. You can have French toast at the Canal Boat Cafe Darcy Green, or bring a lunchbox to the Floating Pocket Park. There was even a canal boat selling records while we were there. If you're more of a land lover, head to Beanie Green, or tuck into Swedish food at Cup. It's unknown where the name Paddington originated, but my favourite speculation is that it's from Paddington, meaning Packhorse Meadow Village and to dance the Paddington Frisk was a local expression in the 1800s, meaning to be hung. Some famous residents and births from the area include Joan Collins, Elvis Costello, George Osborne, Seal, Kiefer Sutherland, Emma Thompson and Alan Turing. Keep an eye out for the Alan Turing Memorial Wall, hidden under the bridge at Paddington Central. Alexander Fleming accidentally discovered penicillin at St Mary's Hospital in 1928 after leaving several peachy dishes filled with bacteria unsealed on the second floor window while he was away on holiday. His laboratory has been turned into a mini museum, which you can visit between Monday to Thursday from 10 until 1. Nobel prizes aside, the most loved local has to be Paddington Bear who arrived at the station from deepest darkest Peru, with a marmalade sandwich under his hat and a luggage tag saying please take care of this bear. You can find a bronze sculpture of him underneath the clock in the station, along with a shop selling his books and other merchandise. Pick up a copy of the paw print trail to find other statues and filming locations around the area. Inspired by Paddington Bear's favourite snack, marmalade sandwiches, we're going to be baking a chocolate orange brioche and using this to make a marmalade French toast. Place a small saucepan over a medium heat and fill with 150 milliliters of milk. Add 200 grams of unsalted butter and stir until it begins to melt. Once melted, remove from the heat and leave to cool. I'm going to be using a bread maker to make my bread, but feel free to use a bowl if you don't have one. Pour in 500 grams of white bread flour, followed by 1 teaspoon of salt and 100 grams of caster sugar. Grate the zest from 2 large oranges before adding to your flour. Then roughly chop up 100 grams of dark chocolate and add to your mix. Give the flour a little whisk and make a well in the middle with your hand. Add 7 grams of yeast to the well. Make sure the milk and butter has cooled before adding to your well. Now turn on your bread maker so that it starts mixing together the ingredients, using a whisk if you don't have a bread maker. As the dough mixes, crack in 4 eggs one at a time. Scrape down the sides of your bread maker with a spatula, and then leave the dough to rise. If you don't have a bread maker, cling film your bowl and leave the dough to rise for 2 hours. Then, bake the bread in an oven set to 180 degrees Celsius for an hour to an hour and a half. Once cooled, remove the brioche from its tin and cut into slices using a bread knife. Measure 100 grams of light brown sugar into a bowl, add 2 teaspoons of cinnamon and 150 grams of marmalade. Next, crack in 2 eggs and beat together with a fork until well combined. Pour the mixture into a rectangular baking tin and spread out evenly. Pop the slices of brioche into the tin and allow to soak up the mixture. After a few minutes, flip the bread over so that the other side sucks it up too. 
Heat a frying pan over a medium heat with a tablespoon of unsalted butter. Once the butter has melted and is sizzling away, carefully add your slices of brioche. Spoon a little of the leftover mixture on top of the bread and leave to cook for a couple of minutes. Once cooked on the bottom, flip over and cook the other side for another couple of minutes. When they're ready, pop the slices of French toast onto your serving plate. To serve, top your French toast with a nice blob of creme fraiche and some fresh orange slices. Now you better grab Paddington Bear because it's time to tuck into your French toast. That's all from Paddington this time, but if you like the show, please make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment letting us know which station you'd like us to visit next. You can find lots more recipes and crafts at cutoutandkeep.net and keep up with our adventures on my blog at catmarley.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.